Today we study the builder pattern. Let's first review the abstract factory pattern. Remember in, in the abstract factory pattern, the factory only makes parts and it does not maintain any state information, which means that so uh, the factory does not remember which parts they, 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 they have many, I mean, produced. So, but sometimes it is desirable for the factory to remember the state and uh, this factory is called a builder. For example, suppose we have a city builder. It remembers what elements you have uh, put into a city and uh, based on which, I mean, based on the elements that you have put into a city, the city builder design rules to connect all the elements, for example. So in here, the clients does not need to care about the details, how the roads are connected and all that. So for example, the clients just call, say, uh, here's the, say, hey, city builder, I give you uh, 10,000 people. I ask you to build two uh, postal offices and I ask you to add three stores and now you give me a city. So based on the elements that the uh, the city builder receives, then, then that city builder will build out this, uh, build the city. And then when you call the get city, get city, the, the city builder, I mean, uh, you will get this, uh, the city that the city builder builds. So also we can have a variety of uh, city builders. So now let's take a look at this application. So suppose you want to develop a tool that can convert uh, an RTF document, rich text format document, to several other formats, suppose uh, plain uh, ASCII text, uh, lead text text, and text widget, and all that. So, and you need to design classes for this uh, application. So now, should you write a converter program for each format? So you can write a converter from RTF to ASCII and you can write a second converter from RTF to LaTeX, and then you can write a third one from RTF to text widget, suppose. And if you do so, you will notice that all these converter programs will share some common code. And what is that common code? The common code is the code that read the RTF and do the parsing, and read each tokens and all that, so, right? So, so the code for parsing the RTF is essentially the same. So now the question is, we don't want to repeat this code, right? So we want to refactor all the common code into a class. And uh, this class function is to, I mean, do this parsing. Well, the solution is this builder pattern. Now let's take a look. So you have this uh, uh, RTF reader and it basically parses the given RTF file. And uh, so, you base in this uh, <coughs> parser, you basically pass uh, three types of uh, uh, elements, so it's three types of data basically, uh, character, uh, font, and paragraph. So here character means this, uh, uh, the token is a character, and the font means that, that this token indicates some information about uh, font. and and paragraph means that this token indicates something about uh, a new paragraph or uh, paragraph finishes and uh, that kind of thing. So that's the, um, we call this a director. And for the builder, as, as we said, we may have all kinds of, uh, I mean, different types of uh, builders. So we may have a, a ASCII builder and text builder and text widget builder and all this they, have, uh, they all need to deal with these three interfaces, right? They all need to provide these three interfaces, convert character, convert font uh, change, and uh, convert paragraph, right? Convert paragraph. So here, <coughs> so here then uh, for this, uh, uh, we have a base class is uh, provide the interfaces, right? This builder uh, provide the interface because uh, this builder uh, pointer, this base class pointer will be given to this uh, RTF reader and we call um, convert character, convert font change, convert paragraph on this uh, uh, builder, on this builder, right? So, so here, uh, 
in the space class because we don't have uh, reason reasonable implementations of uh, uh, these three functions, so we define them as pure virtual functions, and their purpose is to define the interfaces, right? Define the interfaces for these builders. The, define the interfaces for these builders, and these builders need to implement uh, uh, all this, right? So, and uh, and and we also need to have, uh, and for each builder, we also need to have a function, say, get the result, get the building result, builder result. Okay, so this is uh, the generic UML diagram for the builder pattern. So we have a director, and director uh, in this director uh, basically go through all the objects in some structure, and then uh, through uh, through basically through all these objects to the builder, and the builder have a function called builder part. You may have many functions called builder part one, builder part two, and builder part three, and all that. So here we have three functions: convert character, convert fonts change, convert paragraph, right? So and in this concrete builder, we implement all these interfaces and also uh, provide a function to get the result. To get the result. And on this side, this is uh, preparing data, and on this side is the algorithm for building something, building some complex data structure using the data. Okay, so that the the director basically pushes the data to the algorithms, and the algorithms and uh, gradually receive all the data. Right? Do you remember the RTF parsing example? So. The RTF parsing example, you uh, as the the parser reads reads each token, then each token is uh, thrown to the uh, builder, right? So as the builder receives data piece by piece, I mean uh, gradually, the the algorithm need to build the inter build the uh, complex data structure based on the data it receives. As it receives more and more data, the data structure evolves. The data structure evolves. And at any moment, if you stop, you say, hey, give me the things you built, then you can call the get result. You can get the, uh, the result for um, basically get the complex uh, data structure based on all the data you have given to the builder. So here, the algorithm need to maintain state for storing the partial I mean, product build so far, and uh, the algorithm need to provide the interfaces. The algorithm need to provide the interfaces because the data, the director basically throw the data to the algorithms, or say push the data to the algorithms. So the algorithm need to provide the interfaces for the director to push data to the algorithms. And now remember, uh, in comparison for the abstract factory pattern. Is the algorithms pulls uh, pulls the data from uh, uh, pulls data from the algorithms, and uh, the data provides the interfaces. The data provides the interfaces. So the algorithms pulls data from the uh, uh, the uh, pulls data from uh, pulls data from this. Uh, this uh, data class and uh, the data class provides the interfaces. Now let's take a look of design virtues of the builder pattern. Basically, it decouples the data preparation algorithm and the data structure construction algorithm. And data structure, data, uh, data structure construction algorithm provides the abstract interface for the data preparation algorithm, basically the director, to push data to the uh, data structure construction algorithm. So then we can add new data uh, preparation algorithms without modifying the data structure construction algorithms. We can also add new construction uh, data construction uh, data structure construction uh, algorithms uh, without modifying the data preparation algorithms. So. Decoupling is generally good in software uh, design, so we can add new classes or modifying classes on one side without uh, without uh, without uh, changing the existing classes over the other side. The abstract factory pattern also decouples data and algorithms, but the data is on the abstract side, 
Okay. So here, so whomever is called, who need to provide uh, the abstract interface, right? So, uh, so in the abstract factory pattern, in the abstract factory pattern, this is called, right? So the this is um, this is uh, this side is called. So this the need to provide the the. Uh, the interfaces, and here, in the uh, builder pattern, this is the um, the builder is functions are called the builder called builder part. So here, the builder need to provide the uh, abstract uh, interface. So applica applicability. So for abstract factory pattern, whenever you want our algorithms works for different data types, right? So that's for the abstract factory pattern. And the builder pattern whenever you want to build complex data structures from some data. So these two design patterns are for two different purposes. The abstract, abstract factor pattern is for is used when you want to your when you want your algorithm to uh, work uh, for different data types. And uh, builder pattern is when you want uh, to build the complex data structure from some data.